Hello. We've learned one more rule, the product rule, that helps us find the derivative of a function a lot easier without having to expand the product. Let's actually find the derivative for the following functions. The first one I, I'm going to take, f of x, is going to be 2x minus 7 times 3x plus 11. When you try to differentiate a function, look overall and see what you have. In this case, what I notice is that I have a product between these two expressions in the parentheses. So that's the first thing that I notice. Globally, I have a product. I can consider this first expression uh, as a separate function g, and the second expression in the second parentheses would be another function h. And then I can apply the product rule just as we know it. So f prime would be g prime h plus g h prime. And that's exactly how I'm going to differentiate this function. f prime of x is going to be, explicitly I'm going to write what am I going to differentiate first. So it's going to be d dx of 2x minus 7 times 3x plus 11 remains unchanged. Plus, now I'm taking the first expression, 2x minus 7 unchanged, times the derivative d dx of the second expression, 3x plus 11. And now I can uh, evaluate those expressions. So it's going to be the first derivative, by applying all the rules that we know from uh, the previous lesson, is going to be just a constant 2 times 3x plus 11 plus 2x minus 7 remains unchanged times the derivative of that expression is going to be only 3. And all we have to do here is uh, simplify this expression. So we're going to have 6x plus 22 plus 6x minus 21. Adding the like terms is going to be 12x plus 1. So you see the product rule can be applied very easily as well. And it turns out to be very simple. Now, let's consider another example, b, where f of x is x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 2x minus 7. Once again, I'm looking overall, I have the product of two expressions, whatever those expressions might be. So basically two other functions, g and h, right? The derivative f prime of x is going to be, and I'm going to try to, to evaluate this expression a lot um, uh, more directly than uh, the first time. So first we derivate the first expression times the second expression unchanged. But what is the derivative of the first expression, this uh, d dx of x squared minus 1? It's nothing else than 2x. So that's why I'm going to write 2x times the expression, the second expression remains unchanged, and then plus x squared minus 1 remains unchanged, the first expression now we write it unchanged, times the derivative of the second expression. And the derivative of x squared plus 2x minus 7 is what? 2x plus 2. And that's why I'm going to write here times 2x plus 2. And uh, again, we're going to expand these parentheses and try to simplify. So we're going to have 2x to the power 3 plus 4x squared minus 14x, and then plus 2x to the power 3 plus 2x squared minus 2x minus 2. I'm looking for like terms, and uh, I'm going to underline them with different colors. So the result here is going to be 4x to the power 3 plus 6x squared minus 16x minus 2. If you wish, you can factor out uh, 2, and we're going to have 2 times 2x to the power 3 plus 3x squared minus 8x minus 1. And once again, the expression wasn't so uh, simple, but uh, using the product rule, we found the result quite easily. Let me give you another example let's say point C, where the function f of x equals to x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3. Like I said, let's evaluate the expression overall. What do we see? It's a product of three expressions now. Well, that's a little different than what the product rule is, as I gave it to you. That's only a product between two uh, other expressions. In this case, you have actually three possibilities. Consider the first two expressions as a single expression, uh, let's call that uh, g, and uh, x minus 3 to be a second function, h. Or uh, you can take g to be only x minus 1, 
and h to be x minus 2 times x minus 3. So group two of these expressions in only one. You can do that. Or what you can do, you can take each of these expressions as a separate function, g, h, and i. And that's why I actually gave you this example, because it can give you an extra rule if you wish. You don't need to memorize this, but you should be aware that when you have a product of more than just two separate expressions, then uh, this is the way you approach it. So basically f prime is going to be g prime h i plus g h prime i plus g h i prime. So the derivative of a product of uh, more expressions is going to be the sum of the products of those expressions and each time you're going to differentiate in order you can differentiate each of these expressions at a time in each term of that sum as you can see. Let's actually apply this formula that I just gave you and see how that works out. So calculating f prime of x we're gonna have the derivative ddx of x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 those two expressions remain unchanged plus x minus 1 unchanged times the derivative ddx of x minus 2 times x minus 3 unchanged plus x minus 1 times x minus 2 this remain unchanged times the derivative ddx of x minus 3 the last expression and now we can evaluate all that expressions the first derivative derivative of x minus 1 it's actually 1 so all is left is x minus 2 times x minus 3 the same second derivative is also 1 so all is left is x minus 1 times x minus 3 and the last derivative as well 1 so all that is left is x minus 1 times x minus 2 and now all we have to do is um, expand this parenthesis and uh, try to simplify we're gonna have x squared minus 5x plus 6 the second product there is gonna become x squared minus 4x plus 3 and the last product is x squared minus 3x plus 2. I'm looking for like terms. We have x squared, x squared, and x squared. Then we have minus 5x, minus 4x, and minus 3x. They are like terms also. And the constants are 6, 3, and 2. So let's add up all the like terms together. We're going to end up with 3x squared minus 12x plus 11. So this is the derivative of the function I just gave you earlier. I told you you have three ways you can approach this function by applying the product rule. But as a matter of fact, remember how we used to handle a product when we didn't have the product rule. We actually expanded this expression on f of x and we would differentiate the result. So let's try to see if that works out any better than this. I'm going to expand the first two parentheses first. So I'm going to have x squared minus 3x plus 2 times x minus 3. And now expand these two parentheses as well. I'm going to end up with x to the power 3 minus 3x squared minus 3x squared plus 9x plus 2x minus 6. I have minus 3x squared minus 3x squared. They are like terms. I'm going to add them together. And the result is x to the power 3 minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 and actually differentiating this expression it's kind of easier than what I had before so f prime of x is going to be I can directly calculate it um, it's 3 the exponent times x to the power 3 minus 1 so it's 2 minus 6 times 2 which is 12 x at the power 1 I'm not writing that plus 11 of course I get the same result like before I just calculated this just for verification the idea is that you have all these uh, different rules so you can choose when you have to determine a derivative for any type of function you have a multitude of uh, formulas that will help you improve the workflow if a question is asking you to use a rule in particular then you should be able to use that requested rule so practice with all of them so you know how to use them when you need them for now, thanks for watching.